I have to admit I was a non-believer. I was a non-believer of law of attraction and manifestation. I was thinking to myself two nights ago, the sun was coming in. Now, these days when I'm when I'm hibernating, I don't wake up before 11, 11 a.m. I mean, there's no way I'm out of bed before 12. It just, it isn't happening. I've been hibernating and I've been allowing myself to hibernate and not feel guilty about it because it's not making me feel worse than I already am. And I already, I just need the sleep. Now, I'm going to bed early enough. I'm going to bed half 11, 12, which is like a normal, I think is a normal time. And if you think about it, like that's a good chunk. That's a good chunk of sleep. So I'm getting my sleeps in, but I just need it. I obviously just need it. I was thinking to myself two nights ago, the sun was coming in in the morning. Jason has to turn on. Jason sometimes has to get up really early, like 6 a.m. for work. The bathroom, the ensuite light was on. And I was like, I would love a silk eye mask, right? I would love a silk eye mask. And then the day after that, I've had some real issues with Hermes. The postal service, not Hermes, not like the Hermes scarf sort of buzz. It's like anything I've ordered, it just has never arrived. So I've gotten refunds for it and all. Anyway, I was supposed to do the sponsorship with this clit massager, this clit sucker, right? And then the package for this clit sucker that I was supposed to get probably three months ago arrived with a silk eye mask in it. Then I was like on the phone to Ellie this morning. I was thinking this in my head because she was on Abbey Street and I was like, oh my God, I would love a burrito bowl from Boojum. One of those things I've been craving so much and you just can't get the same in London. Like there's no way you can, you just can't get the same. So don't even make a suggestion. And I was thinking that and then Ellie just goes, Keelan, what are your thoughts on Boojum? Out loud. And I was thinking, oh my God, I am manif- Law of Attraction is real. So I was seeing these things on TikTok. This is one of those warnings where it's like, be careful what you wish for sort of buzz because in the manifesting world everyone's like you have to be careful because y you have to be really specific right anyway i was thinking to myself when i was watching these tiktoks of like who i'd cast in the irish euphoria i was like oh my god i wonder if i'm going to be inv included in one of these like just totally self-absorbed and narcissistic of me to even think that and then the next day a girl made one being like who i'd cast in the euphoria but like it was kind of a piss takey one so i'm uh, kind of not sure whether to be like offended or like honored that I was in it or but I think I'm more leaning towards offended and like worried what people think of me sort of thing uh it was more like a ha 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 laughing at me not laughing with me and now I, I can confirm that I'm a big I'm a believer I am a believer now so I'm chilling here at my good good old silk eye mask but let me tell you this I did get up at 8 a.m yesterday but I was up all night with Missy Moo the cat is driving me insane the cat's driving me insane. I don't know what her problem is. She's not doing it right now, but for the past probably two weeks, I don't know what has gotten into her, but she'll just like go into the hallway and just start whinging, like just whinging, not crying. She's not in pain. Like she's not hungry because a few times we tried, we were like, oh, maybe she's hungry, we'll feed her. Maybe she wants someone to play with her. I've tried throwing the ball and all that, you know, the fucking yarn and, all that shite. She doesn't like being pet. So like if you try to touch her, she's actually like, eh. So I don't know what the fuck. It's like, you know, when you try to hold the toddler's hand and they go like this and like wriggle away. Oh, oh my God, it's so annoying. It's, it's like the equivalent to that. She's just started this whole thing where she's whinging, but now she started doing it in the middle of the night because I knew that, I know she cries that if, if she's left in the flat on her own. I know that for a fact because Anytime me and Jason have gotten like a flight in the middle of the night and close the door, you can hear her whinging behind the door, which is really sad. And I'm like, oh my God, you poor thing. We don't leave her in the house. This isn't like, like she has a minder. You know what I mean? We're not actually like leaving her in the house on her own. So I'm like, why is she whinging in the middle of the night? Cause like, we're all here. We're all in the flat. Like, what is your buzz? And then she'll start scratching at my housemate's door. And that's where I draw the line because I'm like, you can't, like you can annoy me. Like I took on the responsibility of adopting you, but you cannot be annoying other people in the house, like they did not sign up for this. So then we have to lock her in our bedroom and then, oh my God, it gets so much worse. It gets so much worse. She's like, Ing! like, oh. We don't let her play on the little, we have a little like a, it's not even a balcony, but it's kind of, it's like, if you think of a balcony to a building, except there's no doors out to the balcony, it's like a ledge, it's, you know what I mean? You've probably seen pictures of me on it before, it's on my Instagram, but you're like, technically you're not really supposed to be there, it's kind of like a safety hazard. If you're my landlord watching this, no you're not. 
she sometimes if the window's open she'll get out and we're like oh my god she's gonna jump down she's gonna run away because like, i'm such a worrier i'm like oh my god she's gonna die so we have to get her back in straight away so we'd like try to bri bribe her with treats which usually works because like you know cats aren't that smart she's just like oh yeah she wants a bit of that salmon she wants a bit of that trout usually like she's out there for like 30 seconds and then we get her back into the win get her back in the window so it's okay but then with the whinging she was whinging all night it got to like the sun was literally rising the sun was rising it was probably about 5 a.m stunning though i was up all all night with her whinging. Now Jason can sleep through the whole thing, so we know how that's gonna go when we have kids. It's really not gonna do, it's not gonna do well for our relationship, I'd say. Anyway, sun rising, and then, do you know what I was just like? I opened up the office window, and I was like, get out, go on, play on the balcony. Play on the little thing. Now, do you know what she did? She ran up and down it for two minutes. I saw, her, I knew she was having fun because I saw her show up at our window. And she usually does that if she gets out to like let us know that she's made it outside. She's like, ha ha, I made it outside, you fuckers. And then we're like, get back in here. But she had done that, right? And then when I didn't react, I didn't react obviously because I'm like, yeah, I want you out there. Go away, like go on. She comes back inside, whinging, starts again. Oh my god. So then I fed her her breakfast, it's five in the morning, then she starts whinging when she's finished. Oh my god. And the only time she's not whinging is when she's like sitting next to me. I know she's not in pain because she's not like hobbling, she doesn't whine if you pick her up. You know what I mean? There's no, and she's not, she doesn't have the shits and she's not puking. So there's no signs that she's like ill or like in pain. And she can still play when you play with her and she doesn't cry when she's sleeping next to me and stuff. It's just whinging because she just like wants to get a bit of attention. Like I swear to God, that's it. I took out my piercings, well my eyebrow piercing. It was just kind of annoying me. I don't really know why, like it didn't, it wasn't like infected or, because I know some piercings can like reject after a while. It didn't reject or anything. But I just took it out because I was like, oh, it's annoying me, it's in the way. And then I woke up this morning and the ball of my scepter ring had fallen out. So I just like took that out too. Hello? So yeah, I took out my piercings, but I, I really feel like it's the equivalent of like, you know, when influencers get their <laughs> lip fillers dissolved. It's giving that because I'm like stripping back. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm embracing my natural self. I'm feeling much more positive than I have over the last two videos because the last two videos I was like feeling sick. I didn't want to get out of bed. I was like comparing myself a lot to other people being like, oh, I don't have any New Year's resolutions for myself. I don't see a future. It wasn't good. But uh, now I'm like feeling I'm gonna get my shit together. Like I have so many good things coming. My life is so full of love. Also me and Jason, again, if you're my landlord watching this, no you're not because we haven't confirmed anything yet, obviously because there's a lot of things that go into it. But we've made the decision to, windy pants, look at her. We have made the decision to move back to Ireland. Thank God. I was actually like, is it just me or is like London really bad and ugly? It's just so ugly. It's just, I cannot, I have no other words to describe London than just ugly. Even the rich areas that's supposed to be like pretty, the parks, like everywhere just seems like CGI or is just ugly. All these people are like romanticizing their lives. I'm like, how? I know a lot of people might be like, but you think Dublin's not. Dublin has an element of romance to it. I know a lot of stuff is like masking the fucking grey wet pavements and a lot of it is grey, but it's just so, it's full of more, I, I just feel more invigorated there. It's just, you know, some places are just your city or you just feel more at home somewhere else. You just thrive in, better in different situations or in different areas. I just think that Dublin is just where I belong and I just think that I get the most creative inspiration. I'm surrounded by a lot more love. I like being near my family. My sisters are my best friends. My best friends do live in Dublin. And it's like, what am I doing here? Do you know what I mean? Like, what am I, what am I doing here? Living in London is so, make you feel shit if you're not rich. It's like, yeah, why aren't you, why don't you have this hunger for to consume things like I do? And see, I'm like Missy Moo in that way where I just whinge instead of changing my situation. I have two conflicting sides to myself. So obviously I have my ADHD, it's like impulsivity if I'm not liking something or if I'm bored or lose interest I'm just like okay I'm gonna change my situation really fast but then there's obviously negative implications that come with that because 
then I'm just constantly chasing this dragon, uh, ins insatiable drag dragon of like contentment that I will never achieve because it's like unrealistic to ever even think of that. And then the other side of me is like, stick it out, you know, there's a thing called delayed gratification, Keelan. You have to learn to change the situation that you're in because you'll always be in, in uncomfortable or negative situations in your life. You're gonna have to learn how to deal with them. So fair, like this side of Keelan is so, that's actually so smart. It's like Keelan, yes. If you think about, for example, like going to college, that is like a three or four year commitment. And usually, initially, when you first start into university, you're so scared, you're like, I don't know anyone, I don't know if I'm gonna like the course but you just stick through it for the next few months and then it turns out to be the best experience of your whole life. Whereas I don't have that mentality or ability to like stick through things, which is why I dropped out of college so much because I'd literally be there for a month and I would panic because I also, on this side of my brain is like, life is too short, the world is ending and you're in a situation that you don't like. Do you see where I'm coming from? So it's really hard to balance out the two where you do have a bit of like, okay, I can see from both perspectives now and from both sides, I can come to the conclusion that I don't like this situation, so I am going to change it for myself, for the better. I did listen to this side for a long time, living in London, because in fairness, I have been here for over a year, which I think is a good chunk of time. I've made friends, I've had loads of good experiences, I love my friends that I have here, which is gonna be the saddest part about moving back, obviously, but at the same time, like, they live so far away, and in London, because everyone's so busy, you barely get to see everyone all the time. Dublin's a bit slower, and it's like, we can hang out and not feel bad about it. Also, another thing is, this is not just affecting me now, because me and Jason are partners, so we come as a package deal. It's like Jason Keelan, which is the key cutest little thing ever like imagine being so entwined with another human that people see you as a as a single entity so like people are like Jason and Keelan you know are Jason and Keelan coming that's so cute that's all I've ever wanted this decision would have would be affecting him as well luckily enough he agrees and we are on the same path and I think that's a lot of the times relationships don't work because the people because people don't want the same things. You know what I mean? People are on different paths. Now, the difficult thing is like when I, I'm really bad at, I don't know what the word for it is. Like I'm a really, really organized person when it comes to my own life. I'm like, I can really organize myself because I've learned how, like I've made up coping mechanisms for myself so that I get stuff done and I'm not constantly procrastinating. So I know how to do the whole like work smarter, not harder thing. So I know I'm only gonna have to do like two hours a day of something to actually get the things that I need to get done. The things that I'm not good at is like, like, for example, if and when we move out of this place, I'm gonna have to sell the furniture and get a new tenant in all in this, a while moving home. And that is scares the shit out of me because it does involve other people, like meaning the new tenant. It does involve like having to get someone else to move into this room. And that's just not something I'm good at because I'm like, oh, people will buy it if they want it. I, there's not really much I can do. And with that mentality, like no one's gonna fill the room then. Whereas like, I should be like, Guys, the fucking south facing lighting, the sun rises in this window and it sets in that window. You have your own private ensuite. It's like has so much potential with the white walls. You can design it however you want to. It's a blank slate. Just the vibes in here are absolutely amazing. Like I'm gonna have to like cook cookies when people come to view it and all. So there's like a nice smell in the house, you know? But I'm just like, the last time I had to move out of a place in London, I lost my deposit because I literally couldn't get anyone to fill the room. In fairness, like that place was horrible it was so like in fairness this room is i paid the same for this room that i did in my last room if you watched my videos back then in the first place that i stayed in london like oh my god it was so bad when me and Emer moved into that, into that room we like feng shui the place and when we moved the bed there was like used condoms and like empty baggies under the bed and all and like the floor hadn't been hoovered when we moved in. Like that's how bad it was. All the furniture was broken. The windows didn't close properly. Oh my God. But we did clean it and like make it look nicer. And even still, it was a shithole. And I found out after I moved out, we didn't know at the time, obviously. So me and Emma were paying 850 pounds for our room in that place. And it was like, there was no common area. So there was no like kitchen table or sitting room. There was no, uh, there was no back garden. If you make food in the kitchen, which was so tiny that like more, not more than two people could be in there at one time. It's like, you need to make your food and eat it in your bedroom. And we were paying 850 pounds for that shithole. And it wasn't even that central. Like it was in, it was in North London. And like, obviously when you move to a new city, you don't know all of the stuff. So it's like trial and error. But anyway, then I, when I was moving out, I asked the landlord, I was like, so can I just double check how much there's this room costs to rent out? So when I put it on Hackney Wix spaces to advertise, he was like, it's 627 pounds. And I was like, wait a minute, what, what? 
So it turns out that the rent that we were sending the housemate, we were sending, all of us in the house were sending our rent to this one housemate who had lived there the longest. And she was like the house ma'am and kind of looked after everything for the landlord. She was like saying it was more expensive so she could pay less rent. Oh my God, we were fuming. So the two other girls, I don't know if they ever figured that out because I left, but I was friends with the two girls. Like the girl who was next door to me in, in that house, um, we were like best mates and she was like, the rent here is so expensive and she literally had a box room. So like, I wonder how much she was paying as well. Like it could have been that the housemate we were, the house ma'am was like paying absolutely no rent. It could actually have worked out that way because she was overcharging the rest of us. So I lost my deposit as well. So they like had my deposit, no pro like they, you know, she took my deposit, no problem. But like, I don't blame anyone for not taking that room because it literally was like, that's my own fault that we moved in there. But it was like, we couldn't go for a viewing because we lived in Ireland, you know? How were we supposed to know? The picture looked really nice. The the fear of like moving out of this room that we, this came unfurnished. So like we bought all the furniture for, for this room. I feel like I've matured where like, I don't want any of these posters. So I think I'm gonna do when I am moving out. Cause a lot of people like over the, 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 the weeks and months that I've lived here, a lot of people would ask me where I got my posters. So I think I'm just gonna do like an Instagram giveaway of all my posters and maybe all my books or something because I'm not gonna like sell them and I'd prefer for them to go to someone who actually wants them. Do you know what I mean? And I have my big ladybird poster somewhere because that gets the most questions. And I also have a virgin suicides ones there um, because I'm not gonna travel with all this stuff. Like it would just get ruined, but I can get one of those poster things where I can post it to you, whoever wins the giveaway. Now I'm gonna have to sell my furniture. We're gonna have to travel. Like Missy's gonna have to get a kitty passport. Like I'm gonna have to get the ferry. I can or I'm really good at doing stuff with the cat. I've got her pet insurance. We booked her in for a spading appointment. She's getting microchipped on her shots so i'm good with that sort of thing like jason has nothing to do with that you know when you're in your partnership like the unspoken rules of a relationship one person looks after one area of the lot of the two of your lives together and the other person looks after the other area that you're maybe not so good at so hopefully he can do the whole getting a new tenant sort of buzz because that oh jesus like i just can't like i can't cope with that and he's just really friendly and more likable than i am i think i'm a bit shy and like stupid so i can get her her cat passport i can do the whole travel itinerary like booking me and Jason the ferry and the train and getting stuff packed and moving over and I'm good at finding flats as well so we go to finding a flat in Dublin and all that shite. I'm also learning how to drive at the moment. There's a lot going on for me right now, as you can tell. I'm also learning to drive at the moment because it just the, the whole system of like learning to drive is way better here than it is in Ireland. And I think it's easier to pass. So I'm gonna have to get that done before we move back to. So it's not gonna be in the next, it's gonna be in the next few months anyway, but like, so should I show you what I've been reading or is that boring? Or do you care or what? Okay, because I've been hibernating for a while and I'm like, oh, this is sticky. I've been bored bored of watching telly. Like the only thing I watch is Euphoria really, but I get bored of watching anything else. Like I'm just like, I'm over it. I've been reading kind of like small books to like get me, give me a kick, uh, running start for the new year, you know? So I started out the year reading The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. That's not necessarily a small book, but it's like a one day read sort of buzz. It's really like easy to read, accessible language, good storyline, really engaging for the whole, throughout the whole thing. You know the way some books are like really good at the start and then it drags a bit in the middle and then you're like hooked again at the end. It's real like for the whole book, you're, you're entranced in the story. So really recommend that if you're just getting into reading as well because it doesn't take a lot of focus power, especially if, it, if you have ADHD, it's very much like the drama. It's like a soap opera sort of buzz, it's very good. Then I read M Train by Patti Smith. This is a bit harder to get into after reading The Seven Husbands of Evelyn, Evelyn Hugo because it's a bit then woo woo. Because Patti Smith's a poet, it's real like cryptic messages and you know, one thing means another. I, it's just like, it's not a story line it's like a running thoughts and you don't really know what's going on but it's a nice read and it's really you know really nicely written and then i read the left-handed woman by peter hankel which was like the weirdest book i've ever read but it was so i really enjoyed it and it's a quick like 67 page read so i read that in one night which is nice and jason was like you get so competitive for when you're reading and i was like what do you mean he was like you make it a mission to like finish a book as quickly as possible and i was like what but yeah but it makes sense like yeah i do because when i was reading the seven husbands of evelyn hugo he he goes i was literally like oh i could finish this i could finish this by tomorrow and he was like no you definitely can't so then i literally did not talk to him for a day until i finished it like that's how competitive i got i didn't i didn't speak to him and like he was off work like he was off work for those two days and i was just sitting there like do you know and then now i'm reading junkie by william s burrow it's also like 130 pages and i'm probably like halfway through i'll probably finish that today too but i'm really enjoying it i talked about it with my sister who also read it and she didn't really like it that much she thought it was boring but i really like it 
Yes, Missy. Get it, queen. She loves boxes. Another thing I wanted to say. London has a lot more like choice of things because it's a bigger city and obviously there's just more things now. If there's the higher population, then there's a higher demand for things, yeah? But you know what London doesn't have? Delis. So people can't like go into a shop and like get a chicken fillet roll. That's not a thing here. That doesn't happen. You can't go in and be like, can I have a portion of wedges? Can I get a sausage roll? Just doesn't, it's not, it doesn't happen. Also what don't exist here, three in ones and spice bags. The Chinese re food places, Chinese takeaways are not nice. They're not nice at all. Like the curry sauce is green and it's the consistency of like a soup. So no, I'm craving food from back home. Like I'm craving boojum all the time. And like, I haven't had boojum in three or four years. It's not like I, I would go there all the time when I was back in Dublin, but it's just, you cannot get that here. So because I can't have it, it's making me want it more. And I'm also craving a red Fanta Exotic slushy from Circle K. Particularly the Circle K near the Artane Roundabout. They don't have Umi here. Like I used to complain when I lived in Dublin with the lack of choice, but it's like the choice that we had was so good. What do I love in Dublin? Tang. Now it's funny because people sometimes text me being like, Keelan, any recommend recommendations from Dublin? And I like, I cannot think of anywhere to go. But then randomly I'll be like craving Dublin and all these places will come back to me. So Tang. Tang, there's one on Abbey Street and there's also one on the top of Dawson Street. The wraps there. I don't know what kind of food it is. It's like Middle Eastern. Well, wait, let me try to look it up because I don't want to be disrespectful. Middle Eastern. Oh my God, I was right. Okay, it is Middle Eastern. And it's like real sustainable. Everything's in brown packaging. You know what I mean? They don't have, they don't sell like cans of Coke there. It, you know, you get like healthy fizzy drinks. Any type of place that sells healthy fizzy drinks, I always like the food there, even though I would get my drink somewhere else because I, sometimes I like a fizzy drink with my food. Otherwise I do like cans of fizzy kombucha. Even though they do taste vinegary and they don't really quench your thirst that well, I just love it. I love drinks out of cans. There's nothing, I, I just love it so much. So I love Tang, I would love a burrito bowl out of Boojum. I still haven't, now I do follow Vcons and they bring their own bowls into Boojum, but see, I just don't have a perfect size. Like what if they're like, this is big for a boot like for a bowl or if it's too small then I'm not getting my money's worth but I do love a burrito bowl then the, pl the plastic is an issue the plastic is an issue but I can just bring my own lunchbox in because that's so embarrassing that if I do that but sure fuck it it's for the planet where else do I love yeah Umi can't bait us the, the patatas bravas there and the per what do I the Palestinian wrap so good oh my god I'm craving it so much even though it makes me fart so much but it's so good Carluccio is just getting a bruschetta and like the past to pomodoro done a crescenzi's i can only get pomodoro pasta there too and bruschetta like anytime i go to an italian restaurant i kind of just they don't really you know what i mean it's there's a lot of dairy and stuff in it but just the pomodoro pasta like hits it's so good the burger king in dublin has the vegan nuggets but the burger king in london doesn't why is london all of a sudden like five years behind is what i want to know also we have sp like vegan spice bags do you know what I love? Camille, vegan pad thai. So good. You know when you've lived somewhere for so long, it's like, I know all my favorite things and I know all my choices. And you know, sometimes you just don't want to branch out of that. And I have here, there was a there was an Athenian wrap place that I would get here, it was like Gyros, is how you pronounce it, where there's like chips and a wrap and vegan chicken. And then I was in Poke Bowls for a while, but they make me sick now. And I got into ramen when I was here, but like, I don't really have like a favorite place. Now me and Jason, we do have Regency Cafe and Polici's to go for brekkie, but it's like, all I get is chips, beans and eggs. It's not like I'm getting a meal out of it, you know? But I'm just craving the food that I would get in Dublin so much. There was this place on South William Street that me and Ellie went to for Ellie's birth. Me and Ellie and Saoirse went there for her birthday. Platform 61? Platform 61? Now we did get, they have a vegan ravioli. And I was talking to someone who used to work in Platform 61 who lives here and I think she said that they discontinued it on the menu or something. Something was wrong. But anyway, it's really expensive. It was probably about 20 quid for a main course but and there was like five pieces of ravioli. But if you get loads of fresh bread, you can like dip it into the sauce and also it kind of makes it, you know, it bulks it up a bit. That was good shit. The Vegan Sandwich Company. Like I've never been to Eat Yard before. I've been outside the New Bernard shop but it just looks, I just don't like the vibes. But yeah, Saucy Cow is also good and I used to get that delivered. What else? Musashi. Best sushi in the whole world. Anytime I've gotten sushi here, maybe I've just been going to the wrong places. I think mo sometimes you're actually paralyzed by choice 
choice here like that's the issue whereas in Dublin like but it's just like anywhere you pick in Dublin I feel like ever it just tastes good yeah the, so the Musashi is like the best sushi in the whole wide world uh it's, there's one on Capel Street I think there's another one on Camden Street do you know where it's also so good Neon on Camden now I haven't been there since I went to college in BIM because it's on Anger Street or is it on Cam? It's on one of those streets anyway, Neon. And they do a vegan, they do they did a vegan Massaman curry and they did a vegan Pad Thai, I think. Something, anyway, so good. That's all I can think. But like, that's a good selection, isn't it? Because I always, you know, you, you only know what you had until it's gone. And I was always complaining about Dublin. Wait, what? No, I didn't complain. Like, in fairness, two summers ago was probably the best summer of my whole life when I lived in Dumkondra with my best friend Ash. I was always buzzing around Dublin, made loads of friends. That's when I first met Emer for the first time. So I wasn't really complaining then. And then that winter, I moved to London. And I'm just on that buzz with Dublin. Like, maybe I'm just romanticizing it because I'm here. But every time I FaceTime my sister, it always just looks beautiful there. And I just wish I was there with her. I'm just like constantly yearning for it. There's just nothing like it. Like, being near your family and friends. Like, you, you actually can't base it. Like, nothing, nothing can. For me, that's what I would equate success to be. And the metric of success for me is having people around you that you love. That was how that's how I quantify success to me. And I think that's how I can get to as close to contentment as possible is being with people that you love. Not that I'm there's no love here. Obviously there's some love in London, but London is like it's not saturated love. It's very dispersed and diluted personally but I just can't deal with the whole city like like I want to be able to go for a sea swim I want to be able to drive down to see my granny in Galway Missy was sleeping on my legs last night like on my shins not like on my thighs where there's a bit of junk in the trunk so it would be comfy like she literally was sleeping on my bony th shins I was like what which I don't like she when she does because then I can't move because I feel bad and I don't want to wake her up but I was just like I have to get over it sometimes because like she is a cat you know and it's my bed you know she has plenty of places to sleep in the house do you know what I'm gonna do today I'm gonna write down a list of everything that I want to achieve this year and actually things that I want to bring into my life and how I want to view myself and what po more positive thoughts that I can put into my head rather than being so negative because no one likes a negative Nelly. It's been hard for me because I actually do, I know a lot of, a lot of situations that people are in, especially under capitalism, it doesn't allow you to view mental health in the same way that physical health is treated with in terms of like days off work and stuff. Whereas if my mental health is doing bad, I will take a big chunk off of doing work or go easier on myself because I just think it's way more important to, you know, be in the right space of mind and not, burn out uh, it's actually usually every year around january february time is when i do get a bit sadder so that's fine so i can actually prepare for it and i know it's coming and i don't feel guilty about it and i've allowed myself because of my job that i can i i can i'm very privileged in that way where i can take this time off work but one thing i haven't been doing obviously and which which i made a promise to myself to is to have a podcast every week and that is a lot harder to do than rambling on a video because for my podcast I like to give more like valuable information and know that people are entertained and learning something so I have to put research into all of them when you're not feeling passionate about anything or feeling a bit apathetic and you can't have a, a, a linear or co coherent stream of consciousness it's kind of difficult to do that that's my explanation for why I haven't been uploading podcasts but I know that in the next I probably will have my first one like realistically speaking I will probably have another one up in two weeks. And then from then on, it will be every week because I do have a lot of ideas. It's not like I'm running out of ideas for them. Like I know what I'm gonna talk, be talking about, but it's when it's the actual effort of sitting down and being able to speak Co like and give a quality amount of work rather than just like putting out podcasts because people want to hear them and they're not good or that I'm not happy with them whereas in videos I can just ramble and like talk shite because it's not really like you're not sitting down and actually focusing a lot on what I'm saying or try you know that's it I'm gonna edit this now see you bye